This is HRW99P044. We have two blocks, or I'm sorry, no, a stationary block. Um, it explodes into two pieces, and we're calling them L and R for left and right. And it's, they slide across a frictionless floor and then into regions with friction where they stop. So piece L with a mass of 1.8 kilograms encounters a coefficient of friction of 0.4. So we're over here. And slides to a stop at a distance DL equals 0.15 meters. Piece R, the right hand piece, encounters a coefficient of friction of 0.5 and slides to a stop in another distance. What is the mass of the original block? Okay, what we have here is a recoil situation. Think of the two pieces of the block as the gun and the bullet in the um, example we did earlier sometime, whenever that was, cannon, something. Anyways, if I can find out um, the mass and velocity of one of the pieces, I will be able to find out the mass given the velocity of the other piece, or something like that. So what I need to figure out is what were the velocities of the two pieces when they um, first split apart. Okay, I've got the mass of one, I need the mass of the other one to get the, the total mass, so that's what I'm going for. Basically my final goal here is what's the mass of the right hand piece, because they give me the, pass, the mass of the left hand piece. Okay, so let's think about this. When these explode, they both have some sort of kinetic energy, but then they go into this uh, friction region, and in the friction region, they're going to lose whatever kinetic energy they have in order to come to a stop. So basically, we need to figure out how much energy does the friction take away. Because however much it takes away, that must be how much kinetic energy the PC used to have when they first split up. So, let's look at piece on the left. The piece on the left, the left-hand piece, it goes a distance of... 1.5 meters. Well, oh, 0.15 meters, sorry. Okay. And I know that it also has a coefficient of friction of, what is that, 0.4. Remember, there's no units for coefficients of friction. I know it has a mass of 1.8. And it has, what else did we know? Oh, no, I guess that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's all we need to know. Because um, I know that its initial kinetic energy is going to be equal to the work that was done by friction. And the work done by friction is the average force of the friction times the distance it goes, which the distance it went was dl. And the force of friction, because this is a nice flat surface, the force of friction is going to be just mu times the normal force. And in this case, again, nice flat surface. That means it's going to be mu. The normal force will be m times g. Um, so that the normal force and mg cancel each other out. So this is basically what I have here. I have numbers for all of those. So when I put them all together, okay, mu times m times g is 9.8 times dl, I get the initial, ah, come on, err, I get the initial kinetic energy. Um, which, by the way, would be 1 half mv squared. I'm putting vl there so I know that that's the velocity of the left-hand block when it left. Um, notice that the mass actually cancels out right now, so we don't even need it. So the velocity of the, um, what do you call it? Yeah, the velocity of the left-hand block, I could solve for it by multiplying by both sides. So I'd get 2 mu g d l equals v l squared, and then and then square rooting. Okay, now if I put all the numbers I know into there, I will get that the velocity of the left-hand block right after the explosion is uh, 1.08 meters per second. Okay, we're just going to kind of store that for right now. Um, well, that means that the momentum of the left-hand block, full screen this, there we go, the momentum of the left-hand block right after the recoil would have been mass times velocity, so that would have been uh, 1.8 times 
1.08. So the momentum of the left-hand block right after the collision should have been, hang on, just put that in my calculator, 1.95 Newton seconds. Okay, now here's the thing. Because that block, when it started off, was stationary, the total momentum has to be zero. But here I've got this 1.95 to the left. That means I need the right-hand block to have a momentum of 1.95 to the right so that the total momentum is still zero. So the momentum of the right-hand block has to be 1.95 to the right. So by the way, I, I'm just doing, um, I guess these would be, or what do you call them? Oh, what do you call them? I am totally blanking out. I want to go back to watching Castle. Um, yeah, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> Sorry. Magnitude, that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be the mass of the right-hand block times the velocity of the right-hand block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing as before. Okay, the exact same thing as before so that I can find the velocity of the right-hand block, then I'll be able to solve for the mass of the right-hand block. Okay, now I am going to run into a little bit of problem because when I was back here, oh wait, no I'm not, no, no I'm not, notice we didn't actually use the mass to find what the velocity was, so since we don't know the mass it's not going to be a problem. So we're doing the exact same thing, exact same thing, in fact I am just going to copy, well, Heck, I don't have to do, I don't have to write anything again. I'm going to erase that. I don't need that. This is the exact same thing, just for the right-hand side. So the kinetic energy that the right-hand side had when it launched is going to be equal to the work done by friction to take that energy away and make it stop, which is all the same stuff, all the same stuff. So basically, velocity on the right-hand side is still... 2 times, this time it's mu for the right-hand block, times g, times the distance that the right-hand block went. Um, if we go look look at our things, for this one, that the mu for the right-hand block is 0.5. Come on. And the distance the right-hand block goes in the friction area is 0.2. That's all I need, so I plug that into a calculator, and I get that the velocity of the right-hand block is... Uh, I hope I did this right. I got 1.4, like straight up 1.4. It's not even irrational. Hang on. I'm just going to square that back and go see what it was. It was 1.96 and then square rooted. No, that's right, because 14 squared is one is not 196. Okay. No, I think we're good. Okie dokie. And back up here, change the colors here, back up here, um, since the momentum of the right-hand block had to be 1.95, then to get the mass, all I got to do is divide by the velocity on both sides, which I just found right there. Boom. So the mass of the right-hand block will be 1.95 divided by 1.4, which is, I can do that really fast without pausing it. 1.95 divided by 1.4. So what I get is that the mass of the right-hand block is 1.39 kilograms. So the mass of the original block should be the two pieces added up. So 1.39 plus 1.8, let's just add that, should be 3.19, yep, 3.19 kilograms. So we are good.